Welcome to the Valareso Capital Community, where we discuss the stock market and trading strategies to become a consistently profitable trader and investor. Hey guys, welcome back to Valareso Capital. On today's episode, we're going to go through the weekly watch list and we're also going to take a look at the market update. Remember guys that this video is for informational purposes only, is based just on my personal opinion and is not financial advice. So let's start here with the charts guys. The, the volatility that we are starting to see in the markets is actually pretty common to see in August, right? Remember that given the seasonality that we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks, we knew that July seasonality tends, tends to be to the upside. And now that we're coming into August, it's normal to start seeing a little bit more volatility. And even uh, with this volatility, we start to see a little bit of a downward bias to the market. So we have seen, we are starting to see some breaks, some breakdowns of some key moving averages in the indexes. So the first chart that I want to take a look at is going to be the BXX. And one of the reasons that I want to take a look at the BXX and before we, we go into the BXX, let me just make myself a little bit smaller here. The first chart, as mentioned, is going to be the BXX. And one of the reasons that I want to take a look at the BXX, because it's a, it's a representation of the term, of the short term futures of the BIX futures. So it's really important for us to, to be able to find an instrument that is going to be somewhat, somewhat chartable. What I mean by this is going to be, what I mean by this is that we can see some patterns that are actually pretty interesting and, and give us a lot of information when we're looking at a, at a product like the BXX. So something that we have been talking about for a while is this divergence that we were seeing right here in the BXX with price and with momentum, right? So you can see right here that momentum continue to go to the upside and price just continues to go to the downside. So we tend to see that these divergences and they can last for a while, but at some point we're going to see that divergence turn, turn around and have a, a meaningful move. So what is the expectation for the VXX going into next week? It's actually pretty, pretty interesting because you can see right here that I have the 21 EMA wave and that 21 EMA wave has been acting as resistance in the VXX ETN. So you can see right here that we had this move, we had the rejection at the 21 EMA wave, and then we have another move to the downside. Now you can see that the divergence is starting to play out, and now we had a move above the 21 EMA wave, and now you can see that we had a pullback, we held that 21 EMA wave, and we are also holding that point of control using the anchor volume profile. So it's really interesting to see that the VXX was supported at this level and now we're probably going to see a more meaningful turn in this product. Now, what is the expectation? You can see right here that we have 28.90. So don't be surprised if next week we tend to see a little bit of chop here in the VXX before we come and test this level right here. We can we could even make the argument that we're probably going to move a little bit more, perhaps to 30. But the first the first value that I'm going to be watching is going to be this 28.90. I think that's going to be a really important level of resistance for the VXX. So that's the first thing that we have to be mindful about is that the volatility uh, ETN is already changing the structure. And if we don't have this, if we don't have this VXX in a clear down in a, in a clear a downtrend then we're probably going to see a little bit more volatility in the market and we have to be really picky with the stocks that we want to trade so that's kind of the message that i'm trying to give right here so let's jump into the es which is the futures for the s p 500 so we were talking about this last week right we were talking about how important this candle was and we were actually seeing that candle using the spx so let me just jump qu really quickly into the SPX so you can see what we were talking about. We were talking about this candle in the SPX. This was a huge candle, right? We don't tend to see a candle like that and then don't see follow through to the direction of that candle. So a lot of people were saying, oh, that was just a shakeout. You have to take in mind that candles give us a very important information about the psychology of the market. So when we see a candle like that, we 
that those candles don't tend to be just shakeouts, right? Shakeouts tend to be pullbacks like this one when you see small candles coming back into support or these candles right here and then you start to see those bounces right away. That's not what we saw here. We saw this huge candle and then of course we're starting to get rejected at that 21 EMA wave. So let me jump into the ES chart once again because it's, it's really more clean to watch the futures. You can see right here that of course we have that candle represented here, which is that selling candle. We of course had that rally back into the resistance of that candle. So we have to understand that when we have a selling candle like that, the tail of that candle, or you can call it the shadow or the wick, that wick tends to act as resistance. So if that is something really important to understand. And then of course we saw the rejection from that level of resistance and now we're coming into support. Now, this is what I think is gonna happen next week. Remember that the purpose of this channel is to create a roadmap for the upcoming week. Uh, and what, what is my expectation for next week is that we're probably gonna see a little bit of a slight bounce, and then perhaps we're gonna see a rejection and a continuation to the downside to test this 50 daily moving average. Now, why do I think that we're gonna see a slight bounce? The reason is that we already had a really strong move to the downside, right? You can see that this is the fourth candle, fourth red candle uh, that we're seeing. So we tend to see a we tend to see a bounce after four days of of going down on basically on a straight line. And most importantly, we're coming into this very important level of support. This level of support, we have this previous breakout level. So we have price support. And then of course we have Fibonacci support. You can see right here that we're starting to come into that zone of Fibonacci. So don't be surprised if we see a slight bounce in the market, perhaps back again at this level of resistance. And then we see the next wave of selling that is probably gonna take us somewhere around this level of 4,440 in the ES uh, futures. So probably we're gonna come and test that 50 daily moving average, but don't be surprised if we tend to see another bounce, then perhaps trap some bulls and then have the next wave of selling that is probably gonna take us somewhere around this level right here. I do expect this 50 daily moving average to act as support. And then perhaps as soon as we test it, we're gonna see more chop going into the end of the month and then going into September. But that's something that we are gonna have to deal once we get there. So right now, the only thing that I'm expecting is gonna be a slight bounce and then a rejection that's gonna be for the ES futures. And let's take a look at the at the queues. I wanna take a look at some of the, of the indexes because I think it's really important to understand what is the leading sector right now. So you can see right now that tech is not the leading sector. You can see right now that tech is already trading below that 21 EMA wave. And the expectation for tech, let me just hide this alert right here. You can see that I have an alert for support. Let me just come right here. Let me hide the, the alert line. My expectation for the queues is gonna be somewhere pretty similar. I'm due expecting a test of this 50 daily moving average. And then perhaps we're gonna see some chop around this level. I do expect that this level is gonna act as some very important level of support. You can see that we also have this round number of 15,000. So maybe going from 60,000 to 15,000 make makes sense right here. So we're probably just gonna see a lot of chop around those two numbers, 15,000 and 16,000. And the expectation for next week in the NQ, it's just gonna be a pullback right into this 50 daily moving average perhaps a little bit deeper to test that 50, 15,000. And then we're probably gonna see a lot of chop. So we have to be mindful of that. And if we take a look at the RTY, we're probably gonna see kind of the same action. You can see right here that we're starting to have this a little bit of a, of a topping pattern right here. You can see right now that it's starting to look a little bit of a inverse head and shoulders. Then perhaps we're gonna see a little bit of, 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 a, of a pullback, of more of a meaningful pullback, perhaps also to that 50 daily moving average, or probably just into this Fibonacci zone, which is this previous breakout level. And then we're probably just gonna see some chop. So this one is clearly not out of the woods yet, but however, the YM is starting to look as a really promising uh, leader here in terms of the indexes. You can see right here that we have a breakout. Now we're just coming right here into this 20, 21 EMA wave. Perhaps we're gonna see a bounce 
And if we happen to see a little bit of chop around these levels right here, then perhaps the YM, once the indexes start to find support, is going to be one of the leading sectors going into the end of the month. So that's something that we have to take really into consideration. But remember that the expectation for next week is going to be a slight bounce, then follow with more selling until we test the 50 daily moving average in the S&P 500 futures and also the NQ futures. So that's basically going to be it for the for the market update. And now we, if we jump for a for a if we start to look for some for some setups, we actually are not seeing much right now in terms of bullish setups. And I also don't think that shorting something while the indexes continue to be above the 50 daily moving average, I don't think that the shorting something when the index is in an uptrend is going to bring us a, a high probability setup. So in these moments is when we start to just, it's better just to wait, wait for a moment of a high probability environment. But I am looking at some setups for next week, but these setups are more related to Bitcoin. So right here we have Riot. I do have a position here in Riot. Uh, what I find interesting in Riot is right now that we're coming right into support. So you can see right here that we're coming into support into that 21, sorry, into that trend oscillator. And we're also coming into support at that 21 EMA wave. So this, setups conti this setup continues to be valid. But however, you can see right here, you can see right here that we continue to be rejected at that POC, which is the point of control of the anchor volume profile. And you can also see right here that we continue to get rejected at that anchor BWAP, uh, basically anchor from the swing high of 20.65. So perhaps seeing a little bit more chop is going to be it's going to probably is going to see what happens it's probably going to be what happens next week but i do continue to think that riot might offer some opportunities going into next week and some other, some other of the miners right like mara are also starting to show some some signs that we're probably going to see a little bit of support right mara is also coming right here into support we of course have earnings so i think that's going to be really important for them for the miners but you can also see right here that we continue to get rejected at that anchor anchor volume uh, at our anchor BWAP from the from the swing high of 1988. So Mara is also looking it's also looking like a like an actionable setup. And if we take a look at coin right here, we're coming right into this level of demand. You can see right here that this was also the level of the breakout level that we had in coin. So probably finding a little bit of support right here in coin and then looking for some bounces is going to be really important. So I do think that coin riot and Mara could be some actionable setups going into next week, especially since more since they are more Bitcoin related than than S and P related. So if we take a look at Bitcoin, so we can finish here the video. If we could, if we take a look at Bitcoin, let me see. If we can take a look at Bitcoin here. If we take a look at Bitcoin here. You can see right here that we're starting to see these very very small candles but we continue to be under the point of control. So since we continue to be under the point of control, then we're probably going to see a little bit more of resistance. However, what I think is very important is this candle right here. If you focus on this candle right here, this is a very important hammer candle. And the expectation of this hammer candle is that this week or this shadow is going to act as a level of support. So as long as the price continues to hold this week right here, then the, the probability of a reversal in Bitcoin continues to be alive. So I think that's something really important to take into consideration if you're looking to trade any of the setups that I mentioned. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. That way you can keep updated for the upcoming videos. Uh, have an amazing Sunday and I will see you in future videos. Take care and bye bye.